how common is obstructive sleep apnea? Uh, about, in referring to uh, this, the data here, uh, about 40% of adults, 40% <clears throat> of adults over 40 snore. And that's about 87 million Americans. 9% of men and 4% of women uh, of that group suffer from obstructive sleep apnea. And less than 10% have been diagnosed. So the number is huge. Uh, it's just not it, because the system is so bogged down with the way we go about diagnosing people, um, uh, many of these people never make their way to treatment. One important uh, change that is on the horizon, and we're seeing emerge now, is the use of portable monitors uh, for the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea when, when, that is about, when that's the only medical problem that's presenting. And in, in some instances, we can use, uh, and the dentist can provide this as well, a portable monitor to screen uh, for obstructive sleep apnea. And in some instances, a qualified physician will take that data and it will suffice to help uh, define these patients. So uh, many of us who are involved in this are helping with the screening and diagnosis process uh, through portable monitors that are available to us. Uh, there's no substitute uh, if you have a, uh, a sick patient or you yourself have medical problems for a full polysomnography or a sleep study in the hospital. And if, if other than snoring and fatigue, uh, if there are other medical problems that you present with, uh, that's probably the way to go. Children have the same problem. Do you know anybody who has a child with ADD, ADHD, who's hyperactive? Uh, do you know any kid who is putting on a lot of weight? Uh, who maybe wets the bed late into childhood, who snores. Uh, I know lots of people like that. Some of them are related to me. And so we have a lot of children in our practice who have these sorts of problems. Do you, do you know that a lot of <clears throat> really fine professional people feel that sometimes ADD and ADHD is just a misdiagnosis for, pe for kids who have sleep and breathing problems? Uh, they just have not been identified yet. These are tired kids, and you know how does a uh, tired child behave? He's naughty. He's attentional. He has attentional problems. In our practice, we see kids coming in and out of the office every day, and they, they grind their teeth. If you just look down the throat and look at the tonsils, and if you see they're kind of big and, and large, inflamed, all you have to do is ask, does this child or do you snore? And if they do, it might explain why they're putting on weight and having problems at school. And we have, uh, we can uh, play a big role in getting these kids into treatment. And uh, kids are going into orthodontics if, if they have some of these symptoms. Before we retract or hold uh, growth, we may want to talk, we may want to just pause for a moment and think about functional appliances and how we can reverse these propensities towards ap apnea in adulthood by managing it with proper orthodontics in childhood. I'm jumping around the place here, but there's, there's so many ways that we as dentists can get involved in the process of evaluation and getting these kids who've been labeled as one thing uh, into the proper category. And uh, in my opinion, in the opinion of others, kids who present with growth and development issues, who have uh, <clears throat> ADD, ADHD diagnoses, many of these are undiagnosed pulmonary problems. And if all you ask is, do you snore? Does this child snore? And there's a yes. Then, then you're on your way to maybe helping a kid out of a real problem that will just follow him into adulthood. <clears throat> uh, a lot of you have insights about you know, snoring and apneic uh, events, but uh, basically uh, when you have airway collapse with the tongue and the soft palate just don't, no longer hold their position, you have snoring and the, the, the potential for apnea. And it's, I believe, and it's the opinion of a lot of people, that snoring is just the first step in the continuum of developing sleeping disorder breathing problems because with the battering of that tissue with the snoring, it might be funny and it's something that uh, you laugh about in the, hunt, the hunting cabin, but uh, where if that continues, it's felt by many that the next step <clears throat> from that tissue becoming uh, engorged and swollen is what's called upper airway resistance. <clears throat> where they're actually having some um, uh, physical effects, arousals from sleep because of the snoring. And if we can just stop the problem while it's a snoring problem, and it's not that difficult to do, you're already doing it right now with some of your TMJ appliances, you just need to know how to quantify that and recognize it for what it is so you can more effectively treat it. 
then you can help these people <clears throat> with a lot of problems. So the question, do you snore? Ask it of your patients who have TMD problems. Ask it of your patients who clench. I don't care if it's a 20-year-old thin girl or a big old fat guy like, well, I'm trying to get, get that handled, who's got elevated blood pressure or, or your neighbor or your, someone in your family who has a, a lot of depression and anxiety and you just don't know why, because sleep impacts so, uh, us in so many ways and can, uh, can uh, cause so many of those symptoms. Just understanding uh, the, uh, the pathology of it is important. So snoring is, a, is due to an airway collapse. A lot of snorers and apneic patients have small airways. And all of us, when we fall asleep, lose muscle tone in our airways, and we're much more prone uh, to uh, sleep and disorder and disordered breathing problems when we fall asleep. All of us have some degree of uh, collapse of the airway when we fall asleep. <clears throat> Why are we tired? Why the lack of energy? Oh, he's a little depressed. Let's give him an antidepressant. Oh, gosh, uh, let's give him uh, some Ritalin. Well, that, uh, until you have a proper diagnosis in some instances, that's how to handle it. But people f develop excessive daytime sleepiness. You hear it, EDS or hypersomnolence. When you, even just from snoring, because snoring or overt apnea and hypopnea lead to excessive daytime sleepiness because you have constant arousals from deep, refreshing, restorative sleep. <clears throat> if you're in REM stage sleep and your body's totally relaxed and your mind's kind of sorting things out and all of a sudden you, uh, as people so often do in REM sleep, wake up because you can't breathe and you do that <clears throat> uh, throughout the night consistently, you're going to be tired because you're never getting restorative sleep. So. Uh, the, uh, a very common uh, red flag for the, let's talk about the patient who grinds her, his or her teeth and says, yes, they snore. If, they, if you ask them, hey, are you tired? Oh, man, am I tired. Well, how tired are they? There's a, there are some forms, there are some um, uh, protocols you can follow, very simple information you can uh, gather in a minute, which will tell you if it's pathological uh, fatigue. But sleepiness, fatigue are common symptoms of people who are getting into trouble who are already in trouble. And the, the social implications for being tired, yeah, that's obvious. Uh, who wants to live with somebody who's depressed and uh, fatigued all the time or are moody? Oh, they're just teenagers. Teenagers, kids uh, can, with, who are retronathic, for example. If, if, if you have a patient or a daughter or a son who presents with retronathia and they're moody, uh, it might be that they're not getting into a mood. It might be that they're expressing how they feel because of physical problems they're experiencing while sleeping.